Hey guys, thanks for watching. We've just got a three-part video series here that we're going to talk about the current state of the fitness industry, where it's going, who's going to succeed, who's going to fail. It's going to be the second video. And the third video is going to be based on people who are looking for a personal trainer, what they should be looking for in that personal trainer. So the first video today that we're going to go through is just talking about uh, where the current state of the fitness industry is. So there's a massive problem in the fitness industry at the moment. A lot of... Uh, People are coming into the fitness industry, they're doing their course, they want to be a personal trainer, they want to help change lives. However, the influx of personal trainers into the industry uh, is, is not necessarily helping with it because the, the disconnect between people who first come into the industry and those who have been in the industry for a long time, the skill set that they have, is uh, the difference is, is just too large. Um, so what happens is if you've got even more people coming into the fitness industry, and they understand that their skill set is nowhere near these people who have experience and have uh, done heaps of further education to be able to improve themselves as trainers. They know that there's this difference between the skill sets. So the only way that they can compete when they first come into the industry is to be able to drop their prices. And what's happening with that is everyone is struggling to continue to like increase their prices. Uh, if you've got like a trainer that charges say thirty five dollars for an hour and then a trainer that charges uh, one hundred and fifty dollars an hour. The majority of the population won't know the difference. All they see is a number in the differences. They don't see the difference in skill set. That's going to be able to get someone results versus not results. Um, with a massive problem that we have is with those trainers that don't have that knowledge, that base, are basically just um, either through poor nutritional advice or poor exercise prescription. They're basically just either messing up their clients' metabolisms through poor uh, nutrition recommendations or messing up their body through poor exercise uh, recommendations and incorrect uh, correction of exercise. So the majority of people that I see at the moment have come from a personal trainer, physio, or someone like that who's actually been injured um, by their previous trainer or been given an ineffective rehab program or something like that because someone hasn't gone through the stages that they should have to be able to get that person to do exactly what they should have. And it's coming from a lack of education of those people who are just coming straight into the fitness industry who are undercharging people. And then the whole industry kind of sees that as what the standard is when it is not really the standard. The majority of people that I actually see um, come and say, this is nothing like anyone else has gone through before. No one's done a functional assessment to be able to test my risk of injury over these kind of points, uh, no one's kind of mentioned that I don't squat properly previously. They just say, oh, yeah, just go lower. Everyone knows you should go lower. However, that's not necessarily the most effective thing. If someone can't get into the right position in a safe position, then going lower is not going to help at all. If they can get into a safe position where their knees are in the right position and their body is mechanically in a strong position to be able to leverage out of that, then they're going to get results from that and going deeper in a safe position. Just saying going deeper because you know that they need to go ask, ask to grass does not necessarily help. So it's all about getting that education for, for the trainers at the moment. And there's just too much of that disconnect with that. All of those trainers coming straight into the industry, straight out of their courses, um, it's just making it harder and harder for everyone else. And then seeing all of those trainers that are charging huge amounts of money uh, but providing uh, service that is way more valuable than that, uh, is, is kind of not helping because people will only see the dollar amount. The amount of times I've had conversations with people uh, in the last, say, three weeks, which is going out socially and talking to people, the first question is, how much do you charge as a personal trainer? And every single time it's the same thing. How can you charge that much? And I always give the same answer. The same answer is people can either buy a personal training session, which they can buy with Joe Blow down the street for $35, or they can buy an outcome. They're going to, if they're coming to me, they're going to be buying an outcome. An outcome is whatever their goal is. I'm going to put in, in place a process to be able to achieve that. I'm going to set out the steps nutritionally, movement-wise, exercise-wise, lifestyle-wise to be able to get that result that they're looking for. If they want to get a personal training session and just have someone turn up for a session and say, all right, this is what we're going to do today, great. Go see a Joe Blow trainer over here, charges $35 a session. Or you can go to someone who's actually going to give you an outcome that you're going to work towards. They're going to outline the process uh, to be able to get that outcome for you. And it's going to be going into like that vision casting thing. And only an experienced trainer is going to be able to do that for you. 
So another massive problem that we've seen in the last 12 months is people doing online programs or Instagram based programs where they're getting a program that's done up for them that's not specific to their goals and their needs. They go to um, the number one Instagram person who basically just writes up a program for them or gives them a cookie cutter program and they go through that. They don't see the difference between that and one that's customized to them. So people who are going through those programs, they think, hey, it's great. This person obviously knows what they're doing. I've seen that their Instagram motivation person has got massive results with them or with other people. However, it's not going to be specific to them. And over a long, over over the period of time coming in, especially into the next 12 months, I think we're going to see a big decrease in um, sales of these Instagram-based programs, not necessarily in the first half of the year, but in the second half of the year, because people are going to realize that these kind of programs aren't specific to them. They're very generic and they don't necessarily get results. They don't take into account someone's starting point, their history, and what their current movement patterns are like. If, they, if you get a program from someone who hasn't actually seen you move, chances are you're not going to get a good result from that because with people sitting down for long periods of time at the moment, I constantly see people come to me that have uh, movement problems without even realizing it. And I have to be able to walk them through a process to be able to get them into the most safe, effective position to be able to get the maximum results for it. If they're not in a safe and effective position from the start, then what will happen is they're going to get to a point very soon where they have a training plateau because their body is moving ineffectively that we can smash them for a short period of time. But to be able to push past that, we're going to have to risk injury too much. Most likely, they're just going to get injured and stop training. And this is kind of one of the problems that we see with the rise of CrossFit. It's not that CrossFit's bad. CrossFit is uh, very good um, in the right context. If you progress yourself correctly uh, and at the right rate, then CrossFit is great for the majority of people. However, people tend to progress it at the wrong rate, try and push past it and do um, movements or exercises or intensities that are beyond their capabilities and then they risk injury. The closer you are to failure, the closer you are again to be risking injury. Height of your intensity, the higher your intensity, the higher, the closer your relationship to uh, risking injury as well. So if you're that close to like point of failure, which you're trying to push basically every workout in CrossFit, then your risk of uh, injury is gonna be dramatically higher because you're working that close to failure at a high intensity for a long period of time. If you progress it pro correctly, it's completely fine. You can work out and you understand how your body works then you can do that, yes, and it's not going to be a massive issue. However, the majority of people uh, that are looking for results aren't in that kind of context where their body's in a safe position to be able to work out at a high intensity. Their knees are coming in when they're squatting, uh, their shoulders are in the wrong position, and if they're trying to push from that position, they're pushing from a position of weakness uh, biomechanically, and also the risk of injury is just going to be increased by being in that bad position. If you can get into the right position and do that for a long period of time, build that up over a period of time, then they're going to be in a completely safe position. And this is going to be a massive problem with trainers coming into the industry as well. They kind of see other trainers just smashing them. They don't know all the work that's gone in behind the scenes to be able to get someone into a correct position to be able to do that. You'll see someone on Instagram squatting 200 kilos. You don't know the work that's actually gone in beforehand. That's only 15-second video showing one rep doing a massive amount of weight and people uh, don't see what goes in behind that. They don't see all the warm-up sets. They don't see the progressions that have gone through to be able to build up to doing that kind of weight, that kind of intensity uh, with good form, which is the biggest thing, which is kind of lacking, especially with like online programs and stuff like that. So, so unless we can bridge that gap between that massive amount of knowledge between the top person Either those people coming into the industry increasing their knowledge to be able to get up to that point, or it's going to be that we're just going to increase that gap even more. And it's going to be that people coming into the industry are going to start charging less and less and less and less and less. And the people in the industry who have all the success and have all the results, they will still succeed long term because they have the skills and the knowledge and they get people results. When everyone's been to one of these people down here and got shit results, uh, been injured, had their hormones messed up by people giving uh, inappropriate uh, recommendations, then what will happen is everyone that's come to those trainers will eventually go to one of these trainers if they stick around long enough. That's what's happening to me. A lot of people are coming in, they say, this is the kind of trainer that's given me service before. Absolutely horrible service. They don't even know it's horrible service. They just think that's the standard. They don't know that there is people giving this level of service that's this high 
compared to the majority of people that are charging $35. They don't see that. You can't look at a profile board in a gym and go and see, well, this person gives this level of service, this person gives this level of service, but this person charges half the price of that, even though you're getting way more value from that, that trainer that has more experience. And it's not just years in a gym. It's those people who are actually looking at uh, increasing their education uh, and improving their skills month after month. And it's not a two-year thing where you have to re-register with Fitness Australia and get an extra couple of CDCs. It's those trainers that are doing the best and that will do the best long-term are going to be those ones who actually improve their their knowledge um, month to month. Every single month, they should be looking at increasing their knowledge, bringing that back to their clients and increasing their level of service. If you're not constantly increasing your level of service, then you're going to fail in the fitness industry. So that's the current state of the fitness industry. Be sure to check out the next video on where the industry is going, who's going to succeed and who's going to fail in the fitness industry. The third video in the series you're going to watch after that is going to be tips on choosing a personal trainer. So if you're a PT, you should watch that to make sure you fill that criteria, fulfill that criteria. Or if you're a potential client, someone looking for a personal trainer, that's what you need to look for in a personal trainer. So be sure to watch that third video as well.